All right, guys, I walked by Estes Concaves booths. I'm here with Matt, and Matt's gonna uh, go over Estes Concaves with you guys, what sets them apart, their new design, and why they changed it. Hello, I'm Matt with Estes, and uh, this is our XPR3 Concave system. What uh, the biggest differences that we've made with this set is that we've introduced the helical slant bar. And this is gonna help push more crop to the opposite side of the road where we're threshing faster, we're getting it out quicker, we're threshing in a wider range of conditions. And this is gonna help a lot with high moisture, green pods, you name it. Anything you can run a combine through. Any crop. Now the beauty of this is that we're not using any covers, there's no inserts, and this is a true all crop so setup. Guys, this is the only concave system in this building that you don't have to switch out a single thing. So I mean that's that's pretty remarkable. I, I need to update from this XPR3 oh, we will. to get away from the cover plates. And and y'all you know, see me use the cover plates, that's because I have an XPR2 system. You don't have to run the cover plates, I do. But this is going to take, you see there's no cover plates up here. There is none. They're gone. You can see how this slat is angled now compared to here. This one is straight. But uh, what this is doing is we always get the rotor loaded heavy on one side. This is feeding a lot more material to the other side of the rotor, distributing that material over the whole rotor basically. and. Uh, the, these big gaps in here is what lets that grain get on get on through the machine and get gone but i've said it again y'all seen it in my videos where i've got the concaves out on the ground here's what sets estes apart right here is this pac-man lip you can see this pac-man lip right here and tell them why you got the pac-man lip what this notch bar does for you where's my we're looking for a prop but anyhow what it, what it allows is you're threshing grain on grain not grain on metal that's how you crack the snot out of corn the way this system works is we have this notch bar and what this notch bar does compared to a stock ground bar or other bar designs out there is it provides more surface area and a crop flow restriction. You need crop flow restriction to help distribute the crop evenly. The number one issue in a combine is overload on one side, so we need better crop flow distribution. And this helps eliminate the compression of grain against steel, where often you find, you know, where you're seeing too many cracks, splits, broken cobs, things like that. Uh, so the you know, there's a lot of magic in what's going on here, but you know, it's a pretty simple setup. And you know, what we're seeing as far as results, more capacity, we're seeing better grain quality. There's obviously no switching here, so there's you know a big convenience factor. And you know, if you can get more out of your combine, hey, that's what we're here to do. And and guys, it's sold as a system. And and tell them, is this the system right here? What you're seeing, or will that be? Two more of these. This is, uh, so this is the XPR3 four piece system. Our full package comes with three separation grates with the front three concaves. And that's what I have guys. I have three of the concave grates, three three of the disruptor grates I call them, or separation grates. Uh, Y'all saw me put the put the one more in there back in the fall and that totally changed that combine. That one grate took that combine to Cadillac level. I'm talking it, it was crazy how much that one great changed that machine. But uh, yeah. And what were some of the issues that you were having? We were losing it. We are losing like one or 2% on the ground. But you gotta think, I have a 660. I don't have the capacity like a 670. So I have to get the grain in, get it, get it separated in a shorter, smaller chamber than a 670. But yeah, when we put that one, we, all we done is put one, one more of these in, and what we were doing with it was we were shaking that corn and cobs one more time before it got into the OEM separation grates in the back, and that allowed that last little bit of corn to come on out. And y'all seen me post pictures on Facebook and whatnot of this grain sample out of the top of the combine. It looks like something you buy at a store. I mean, there's 
zero stuff in it. I mean, the guys at the elevator, they tell me all the time, hey, you need to teach these other guys how to set their combine. Because, I mean, it, they bring in some trash down there. And my corn's always clean, uh, very little cob in it, very little whatever in it. And yes, you will see some cob in mine from time to time, but that is a variety uh, or tip back issue that when you see that. But 99% of the time, the grain sample is 100% spot on. I can't say enough about Matt and Estes Concaves, guys. They've been with me for how many years now? Going on four years. Yeah, four years I've been partnered with them. And Matt P always picks the phone up, gets me what I need, answers the questions I have. If not, he directs me to somebody that does have the answer to the question. I want to show you something else. And another big improvement that we've made this year is you no longer have to wrestle these crates in your combo. So we've made this, uh, now this is turned around backwards, yep. but we've made this a split design. So it's a lot more user friendly this is like one of the and uh, it just makes it an all around better experience. And y'all saw me wrestle these things in that combine. It, it, they're heavy. And uh, yeah, show them that right there. So what this is, is our raised disruptors. So these are built into the grate. The grate is wider than stock and we're getting pretty significant horsepower savings out of the grates, but they're also your last line of defense. This is what's going to capture any of the loose grain that's hung up in the shucks, the straw, you know. And that, it's always see, stuff Matt, that was my problem. See, my, the separation grates you sent me before did not have these. Mm -hmm. I stuck this one in the first slot and put the other two in the rear slot. Like I said, it shook that corn one more time and got that last little bit out before it went out the back of the combine. But if you want to starve the crows and get a cleaner sample, you need to look up Estes Concaves and um, great company to work with. Matt, thank you for always working with me. Eric, I appreciate it. Pleasure. Thank you. All right, guys, I'm here at Precision Planting and uh, I got to play a little catch up here. I was supposed to be at the winter conference, missed it because of snow. So I'm going to get it done here. So. Uh, I'm going to turn it over here. We're going to talk about the Cornerstone unit. This is the new unit they, they unveiled at the Winter Conference. Take her away. Yeah, hey guys. Sean with Precision Planning, a product support team here. Just taking a look at Cornerstone. Um, all factory integrated precision planning technology from the bar back, right? So getting things like a rear tipping hopper, being able to shut off our seed pool, remove that meter, get in there, be able to service that meter. Getting a lot of adjustability. So alignment of our closing system. Um, some depth calibration features that we integrated into this. Obviously, if you look, trailing gauge reel arm styles. So did a lot of studying on, on gauge reel arms and, and the best effects that we can have and really, really closed in on a trailing style gauge reel arm for this system. Also integrating our Duraware style parallel arms and our gauge reel pivots. So really just looking at, you know, how can we, how can we improve uh, this system and, and looking at it as a whole planning system. So obviously this is what's doing all of our work in those fields. So, so looking at it as, as an integrated option to be able to improve that bar that you guys already own. And guys, I'm gonna be honest with you, this is the most important pass that you will make all year long. That it, you've got one, t one shot to get it right and you better do it. But why, why did they put this arch in these? Is there some design to that? No, so it's, I mean, it's an aesthetic thing, right? So we still have that 14 inches of vertical travel with this. Um, the arch is, is just aesthetic. And, and I've always said it, these gauge wheel arms need to be pulled from the front, not the rear. I mean, this is, you don't have to grease this. You have to grease these on deer every single day. And then they're still gonna wear out. I mean, there's, there's no, it's just wrong. It's a wrong design, been wrong for years. And I don't know why they hadn't changed it. I mean, I, I do because Casey's got it. But I mean, still, I mean, if it works, you need to have it. But yeah, this is this is really robust right here. I mean, look how wide this is. This is as wide as my hand. Yeah, and really, this, this really is, trying to get that harness, the, the uh, hose routing, everything inside of that shank versus running it on the outside. Yeah, yeah I can see that now. It's all inside. This is, I mean, that's a nice adjustable handle there. That's just a nice, nice unit. I mean, and seriously guys, most of our planters, the bar is good. You can't wear a bar out. So if you're thinking about retrofitting your planter or whatever, at least take a look at Precision Planning's unit, guys. Um, I know you can buy a kit from Deer and all this crap, but look at their stuff. Their stuff works. Their support is great. 
and uh, they've always been good to me. Uh, I get parts, I get service, whole nine yards, and I live in the middle of nowhere, y'all know that. So, but anyhow, we're gonna pass it on here. We're gonna go over here and take a look at Clarity. Thanks, Sean. Yeah. Probably not. Oh yeah. Well, they're still working on clarity. So let's go over here and let's talk about this one. All right, we all know about the reclaim system. I've done a video on the reclaim system. Now we're gonna talk about symphony. So take it away, brother. Okay, so. <clears throat> What we got here, this is Symphony. This is a pulse width modulation system. So PWM control. And what we're doing is we're actively controlling the duty cycle and the frequency at these nozzles rather than at the tank. So you can see here these nozzles, they're pulsating. Uh, I don't know how you'd say that. Frequency. Yeah, the freq with our frequency, but with that pulsating, we are, ah, uh, shoot, I'm, the word is slipping me. Well, you're basically, there's a couple of things on, going on here. You're, you're, you're not cutting the rate or nothing like that. You're just not controlling it a lot better. Droplet we, size, whole nine yards. We can, we can control the droplet size much more effectively with this setup and run at a lower frequency because these nozzles are pulsating, um, off in not in tandem so nozzle nozzle one and nozzle three will pulsate together and then nozzle two and nozzle four will shut off when those two nozzles are pulsating so what that effectively means is we can run at a 10 hertz frequency compared to all the competitors that recommend 15 to 20 we can run at a lower frequency and have an effective 100% overlap of each coverage. So we can run at a lower frequency, which is gonna increase the life of your solenoid, your poppet, your check valve, everything inside this assembly in the long run. And, and guys, this is, here again, if you have Precision Planning's Gen 3 monitor, this is another way that you can take that monitor, use it in your sprayer, and this is more line, more along the lines for the guys that have older sprayers and want to want to get the pulsating yeah. effect. You know, um, you can buy this kit very reasonably and put it on your sprayer, and you can be pulsating just like the Exact Apply, like I have at home, and uh, also use the Gen 3 monitor in the process. And look, they've also updated monitors, larger screen. Now you can see it a lot better. This is the old one, like I have. This is the new one. So I'm gonna have to be getting in touch with somebody to get me swapped out. So definitely a lot larger. You can you can run two split screens now and be able to still function. I know that's always my trouble. Absolutely. Screens are small, big fat fingers. Absolutely. Trying to run two screens. Absolutely. You're always hitting the wrong button. And uh, yeah, that's gonna be sweet right there. So we're gonna jump over here and get on the clarity and uh, see what they have to offer over here. All right, take her away, brother. All right, so I'm Clay from Product Support here at Precision Planning, and here I'm ta talking to you about Clarity. So Clarity is our individual row-by-row -row monitoring system for granular rate control. So we can uh, monitor your strip-till rigs, your air seeders. You know, in the south we can we can do rice, all of that stuff. So we, we're using your factory, in a lot of cases, your factory blockage sensor. So if you have that three-pin connection there, we can tie right into that. We've got a little bit of harnessing there, and what we get is really, really clear maps as to what's going on on the 2020 so we can see those blocked rows and now we know exactly where we need to go back and and check things out you can see the rotor rotor variability right here they're not all the same yep yep so a really exciting product for for uh, strip till for air seeders all that stuff we're really excited about it's been doing really well for a lot of guys yeah and uh, you know strip tilling is something that's not real big around down where i'm home but it's getting there and uh as nutrient uh programs get tighter it's probably going to be where everything's going to be headed so guys if you if you're not looking into some of this stuff to uh control the amount of nutrients you're putting down you need to do it because 
restrictions are about to get a lot tighter on fertilizer being applied, how much, what times. Uh, Tennessee and Alabama's kind of a little lax on that deal. Uh, Alabama's more stricter on chicken litter than Tennessee is. But, uh, you know, just like up in Maryland and the watershed and all that, they're already really stiff on them guys. And uh, I've heard through legislator, legislative that it is coming to south. Uh, nutrient plans, whatever. So, guys, look into stuff like Clarity. Uh, look into strip-till rigs. Uh, look at all Precision Planning's products, guys. Y'all know I preach it. Every, every one of my videos has something about Precision Planning in it. They have an array of products to offer to help us farmers get better at our job and be more efficient with the, with the amounts we're applying, the seed we're applying. I mean, a sack of corn seed I looked yesterday was like 350 bucks. I mean, just ridiculous. It went up another three or 4%. So, I mean, you, we've got to get precise with this stuff and that's, what, that's why it's called precision planting. Uh, they, uh, they got the furrow jet, you know, it puts the wings down in, in the furrow Three different, three different locations in the furrow. Uh, furrow force, which is the closing system. Let's talk about the row cleaner right quick. Yeah, let's do it, let's do it. So right here we've got, uh, we've got our precision planting reveal system. It's here on a Case 1200 row unit. Um, over here we've got it on a Harvest International. We can go on to most any planter with this. What we've got is we've got two different ways to adjust our row cleaners now. So if we think about our traditional row cleaners, all we had was air pressure. You know, if we had a control, we might not have even. It may have just been pin adjust or screw adjust. And what happens if you've got a screw adjust row cleaner? You never adjust. You it. never adjust it. You go out there with with the wrench. You can crawl under there. You adjust one. You get back in the cab. You throw the wrenches, and you're done with and it. And I'm guilty of it. Yep, absolutely. So what we've done is we've pulled that row cleaner off the bar. So now we've in, improved row unit ride. We put it, mounted it to the bar, so we got that chatter out of the row unit. And what we can also do here is now we can change the depth of our row cleaner, but then we've also got that airbag up in there so we can independently adjust how much air pressure we have, how tight we're holding that to the ground, as well as how much cleaning action we have with that depth. And we've also got different options for cleaning wheels, so we've got these blade style. Um, over here on this Kinsey, we've got our tine style. So this is gonna be what most guys are running in a lot of conditions. This is gonna be our most common one. Is this but less aggressive? This is less aggressive than the blade style. That's right, that's right. So we've also got treader wheel options. You can run this with or without the plastic wheel there. And you really don't need the treader wheel because you're you're gauging it back there. You're that's not right. gauging it off the time. That's right. This is what we're doing all of our all of our depth with is this system right here. And honestly guys, that's where these other row cleaners fail. They're gauging depth off of that treader wheel. Well, your soil is variable. You might hit a soft spot, you might hit a hard spot. It's gonna be all different. They're gauging this depth off of this, off this gauge wheel right here. And also where I've seen the videos, guys, this is what really got me turned on to it. It's once this cleans this path, this smooth wheel is rolling right in front of that disc opener. And it's creating a smooth, surface for those gauge wheels to ride on and that pumped me up more than any part of it but yeah reveal i mean it's been out what a couple years now yep a couple yep. years now uh plenty of them no doubt. yeah there's there's a bunch of them yeah yep the, what about clarity availability pretty good pretty good yep, yep. reclaim i heard it was sold out in june uh symphony sold out to june symphony. yep yep, okay. yep. so hopefully june. hopefully hopefully sometime in the summer we get some more going and, and the larger screens june hopefully yep yep so. so guys things are things are freeing up i know there for a while you couldn't hardly get stuff from precision planning uh speed tubes whatever speed tube availability good i think it's pretty good yep yep so. but anyhow y'all check out precision planning all their products and uh yeah let's go enjoy the show thanks guys all right, guys, we're back for the last day of the Farm Machine Show 2024. And I walked up into John Deere booth and we're gonna go over some of the new things that Deere has this year in their lineup portfolio. So we're with Ride, ride Equipment, so take it away, brother. All right, we're here in the booth at the centerpiece, we have the 410R sprayer, CN, uh, CN Spray Ultimate. Basically, this sprayer is a, uh, a new platform that Deere has with the new technology of CM Spray, otherwise it sees a plant. 
and sprays it and then turns the boom off. The thing that makes this sprayer unique is a few things. If you look, we have two fill-ups up front, we got two adductors, we've got two tanks, we've got two totally liquid systems going out. If you look at the booms that we have up top, we have 120 foot carbon fiber booms, which is only on a CN Spray Ultimate machine. So if you see a boom that looks like this, you know that it is a CN Spray Ultimate. But there's also two tubes going down each boom all the way across. So what it makes us happen is we have two systems that can't contaminate each other unless the farmer does it themselves. So basically it allows us to spray a residual on the ground and then the CN spray cameras kick in. If you look up on top on the booms at the very top, there's 36 cameras across through there. Those cameras allow us to go through the field at 15 mile an hour. It'll see a, a weed a quarter inch or bigger and it will spray that weed and then shut off. So it utilizes up to 60-70% chemical savings in those type of applications. So great new product on the market. It's pretty awesome technology guys. And down where I'm at in the south, I, I know you know we struggle with that because we have to do uh, like a regular cleanup and then we have to come back with Ingenia. I mean, this is gonna allow us to split the tank loads and run two different products at the same time, only where we need it. I mean, I, it's gonna be some awesome technology. I mean, uh, and it's brand new. Yes, there's gonna be some learning curves, uh, but y'all know Mother Deer, they pretty much got it figured out from the word go. So. Appreciate you, appreciate you taking time. Thank you, and yep. uh, appreciate it. All right, guys, I stumbled on up on top of Mr. Paul Schaefer's booth. Uh, y'all got y'all know this is the closing system that I preach about all year long about how good a job it does. And uh, I, I run into Mr. Paul and just talked to him a few minutes and, and told him what all we had going on. And I want to share this with you guys because y'all ask me all the time what style closing wheel is that on your planter. So Mr. Paul, tell them why we went with this zipper. Well, a uh, long time ago, we were using straight spiked wheels on our planter, and we live out in southwest Nebraska where we get about 18 inches of rain a year, and a lot of times we get one third of that rain in one, one shot, maybe four or five inch downpour. And so we, we maybe go two to three weeks without a rain. And when we were using straight spiked wheels, we would, uh, they re-loosen as they come out of the ground. They stab the soil, break in chunks, and re-loosen as they come out. And so we started working with wheels that we could uh, uh, angle the wheels so that we didn't rooster tail soil up out behind us and uh, create looseness and dry out the soil and have germination problems or late emerged plants. And as soon as we figured this out, it uh, it's helped us immensely. Now we rototill that soil in around the seed. We break it down into fine particles, lets that uh, bacteria in the soil uh, enhance uh, plant growth and things. And as we plant, then this wheel will it'll release the soil as it comes out of the ground. It releases it and leaves it compacted around the seed. And we really like that. It just, it does an excellent job. We've eliminated a lot of uh, non-emerged plants, uneven emergence and things. And guys, I'm gonna show y'all what's significant about this design. You see this is already on a on closing tail here. You see how this wheel is angled and you see how this engages the ground and how these are angled this way. This is pushing that sidewall in and this is exiting the ground like this and you're actually tilling this soil. Okay, I get the question all the time. Are you drying your seed trench out? No, no. What you are doing is you are totally crushing that sidewall in and closing that trench from the bottom up like you're supposed to and, and it, in turn, you get better emergence, even emergence, and that's why my corn never comes up in a straight line because we have destroyed that seed trench. You should never see your corn come up in a perfectly straight line. It should be offset from each other just a little bit here and there, all the way up through the row. And that, that closing wheel, that closing wheel has been one of the 
tools in the toolbox, so to speak, for us winning all these contests. But uh, you know I've got a competitor's name on my planter, and, and I say it all the time. This one is just as good, if not better, than the others. This one is two hundred and thirty dollars a row, Mr. Paul. Two, two fifty a row. Two fifty a row. All right, two fifty a row. The other ones is eleven hundred to thirteen hundred, depending on how you get them. A row. It don't take me long to run the math there. Yeah. yeah. This closing system, we've been running. This is our. This will be our fourth crop that we're fixing to plant with that closing system on it, and. Uh, I won't have another planter without them. Uh, they'll, from now on, they'll have, unless somebody comes out with something that's 100 times better, they, we'll always have them on it. I mean, it's just, they're so forgiving in the cotton world because in the cotton world, we plant the first knuckle, about three quarters of an inch deep. So if you're not careful, you will actually move some of that seed around and flick seed out of the trench. These are aggressive, but they're aggressive on the outside of the trench, not over the top of the trench. And that's why you never flick seed. You take some of these other competitors that are that are twisting and flicking. Yeah, you, I've seen guys that take some of these other ones off because they're flicking corn out of the ground. And you know if it's gonna flick a corn seed two inches deep, what's it gonna do to cotton seed? Yeah. Just flick them all out. You're not gonna find them. No, you're, they're gonna be all over the place. So I just wanted to share this with you guys. Please look up Schaefer Manufacturing, guys. Talk to Mr. Paul. He he spent three days on the phone with me before we got the right wheel that I needed. Man. I mean, we went over Mohawks, we went over zippers, we went over cast ones, plastic ones. Yeah. We went over them all, and we wanted to make sure that we got the right one for one of Because you got one shot okay. at getting it planted. Yeah. And planting is your most important pass you'll make all year long. Get it right. And I don't know if you know or not, but corn seed went up about another 4% this week. So you, you, you can't be wasting doing replants and whatnot. And I just wanted to share this with you guys. Uh, and uh, a lot of you ask me every single spring, what style closing wheel is that on that planter? Now you know. Schaefer manu Manufacturing, he manufactures all kind of fertilizer, Influence to go on the planter, closing wheels, tracking wheels, you name it. It's just family owned, family operated business. Just a super, super good company. Y'all lick him up. fence sprayer guys that we were supposed to demo but it, we never did get it um, just didn't come in time this thing right here is a game changer this thing can raise up and you can go through your corn while it's up this thing is massive it's built real good booms are built good real nice machine. Fent is definitely making a stir in the ag world uh, with their combines, with their tractors, with their sprayers. Uh, they thrive their stuff on their service and uh, that's what drives them home. So let's look at some more of them. Right here we have the track machine. Eleven sixty two. Thing is a monster, monster. This is their this is their planter right here, guys. Um, you see how it's got two separate bars. They're able to control the tire pressure through the air and the tires. And they got all kinds of travel back here. Being this bar is trailing this other bar. 
super sweet setup, all powered by precision. Uh, they've changed. They've changed the game. That's for sure. And, and tractors and planters and sprayers. But if y'all haven't checked out Bent, y'all need to check them out. At least take a look at them. Anyhow, their service is uh, superb. And just because you don't have a dealer in your area or whatever, still check them out because they've serviced it no matter where it goes. All right, guys, I'm over here hanging out at the Thunder Creek booth, and uh, guess who walked up? The man, the myth, the legend, the TikTok king. That's What's going him, on, guys. Tony walked up, and uh, he's checking out the trader. And uh, man, this thing—the more we look at it, the sharper it gets, and the more use we're going to get out of it. I mean, it's just—it's crazy how much they can cram in these things. I mean, just—it's going to be so nice to have your hydraulic oil right here tools over there deaf in the bottom everything's metered pumped uh, one-stop shop as far as service and equipment but yeah me and tony we're in here we're just checking out the show and uh watching all these crazy people walk by swinging these wooden sticks yeah that they are oh uh, they were a band giving out the wood sticks i hate it but anyhow we're just standing there hanging out uh shaking hands with people talking to people uh yeah, big crowd. Uh, man, it's been crowded all week. You missed out on all that. Tony just showed up for the last day. He just showed up for his gig. <laughs> I don't blame him. I would have too. But anyhow, we're just hanging out and uh, appreciate him. I, I mean, Tony, Tony helped me get this thing started, guys, and get it up off the ground. Uh, I asked him for a lot of advice when, before we actually put it on the platform. Uh, we asked him for his advice, and he has been over backwards to help me and Aaron get this started and to make sure that it took off once we got it started and to make sure that it was uh, pretty much right, you know? Yeah. Because if you start this thing, you can stumble. Yeah, you can. And, and, and there's no telling how many people I have walked around and they said, Man, you have done it right. Yeah. It has blew up, and it has. And I know we've only got like 5,000 followers or whatever, or subscribers on YouTube. That's in 12 months. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Stick with it. And the thing that you should be commended for too is I get a lot of people ask me, you know, how do I start a YouTube channel? And this and that. Not that I'm an expert, but you done it. You stuck with it. You followed other people's advice, and you made it work. And so yeah. You should be commended for that. Yeah, you can't. You can't get down on yourself because there's laws. Yep. There is laws, and, and and I've just been blessed that we haven't had a lot of negativity. Yeah, that's good. And, and, and that's good, because we, we don't put out no drama in there. There's no drama. Uh, we try to have a little bit of fun here and there, but it's pretty much, uh, you know, if you want to know how to grow high yield corn, you need to be paying attention, because I'm giving it all away free. Exactly. You don't have to join some kind of group. There it is. I mean, it, it's all free. All you can just hit the on the cl uh, click the subscribe button. Doesn't cost a dime. And uh, like I said, Tony and his family have been, they've been family ever since I run into him. And, uh, you know, he's welcome in our place anytime. And like I said, he, he made sure that we laid this out correctly to where it did not fail. And it hasn't. I mean, it has skyrocketed. Yeah. And, 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 I'm happy. Yeah, and we, we've got a lot of sponsors on board now, and, and that's made a huge difference. Uh, it's just, you try to do the right thing all the time, you know, and, and just put, the, I try to put the best material out there that I can. I don't put out garbage. Uh, I try to just put good material out that people want to see. And uh, yeah, glad to call Tony a brother from another mother. Heck yeah. All right, guys, I come upstairs. The 2024 Farm Machinery Show is over. So I come upstairs to my last stop before I go to the truck. Uh, I always come up here every year. Sometimes I meet them at the gin show, but I stop at Custom Farm Toys Boot. This is where all my custom toys come from. These boys are from the Delta. Uh, Brad and Blake, they do an awesome job. They hand make a lot of these toys. And uh, I just wanted to showcase them a little bit. and. Uh, what kind of business they done today, what they're fixing, where they're going to next. So I'm gonna introduce y'all to Brad and Blake. Howdy guys, we'll be at the uh, Mid-South Farm and Gin Show in two weeks. We've had a really good week here at the Farm Machinery Show in Louisville. As you can see, we have been hitting pretty hard. 
but we'll have a whole lot more stuff to show in two weeks. Go ahead, Blake. That's, a, that's about it. You know, any kind of farm for you're looking for, we're going to have it. So come out and see us. Yeah, guys, and I'm telling you the detail on these things. I mean, y'all look at some of this stuff. Look at the 360 tanks. It's crazy the detail that goes in. Tile machines, tile carts, cotton pickers, peanut wagons, bowl buggies, module builders, you name it, irrigation rigs. And the thing is, guys, what I just showed you, I've got one of just about every one of them in the cabinet. But anyhow, I buy toys from these guys every year, half for years now. And uh, like I said, they just do an awesome job. And I can kind of relate to them because I'm a cotton guy. They're down the Delta where all the cotton is. So they make a lot of this equipment that's kind of towards cotton, so to speak. But they also make grain equipment. And uh, yeah, they have been hit hard here today. There is hardly anything left. Anything. They had a big old cotton picker up there. A big one, and I wanted it, but I could afford it. But sold it. Piff. But anyhow, it was a giant uh, roller picker. Uh, very detailed, handmade, and uh, yeah, it's, it's sad. But anyhow, uh, thank y'all a lot for uh, continued business, and uh, we appreciate your business. I know we won't be at the gin show, but I know y'all be there, and y'all have a lot of big big toys there and um, they'll have a lot bigger lineup at the gin show than they will here because that is cotton country down there and uh every, they all run that equipment down there and they mimic those, those the equipment that they're running uh and they mimic it to the t and uh y'all see these tanks on these tractors detailed but anyhow that's all folks for national farm machinery shore 2024 we're out of here all right guys i just made it back to the truck <clears throat> had to make a long walk and hike had to go back and get my toys i forgot to get them they were all on the other end of the building so i had to go back and get my toys but 2024 national farm machinery show is over uh, it's been it was a really really good show there was a heck of a crowd here and, and i want to just say thank y'all to each and every one of y'all that come by the thunder creek booth and uh just said hello and shook my hand and talked and we had conversations and 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 i just want y'all to know that i greatly greatly appreciate each and every one of y'all uh coming to the thunder creek booth and supporting me and thunder creek i also appreciate y'all tagging along through this whole wreck truck episode to end up to where we are today it is one heck of a story that you could have never dreamed up on how we went from a truck to Thunder Creek Field Trader. You couldn't have wrote that if you'd had a script. But anyhow, uh, I've done a lot of business here. I picked up a lot of things that we really, really needed. Um, I mean, I, I also done business as far as what we're gonna use next year. Uh, talked to Mark Coots with Teva, uh, getting some stuff lined up with him and um just looking at the new equipment the latest and greatest and uh, of course you've seen the big red case combine uh they just unveiled it's funny they wouldn't even let you look on the inside of it they wouldn't even, they wouldn't even let you get close to it nor the yellow one the, the new holland they wouldn't even let you look inside of it as far as the guts and stuff no 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 top secret so uh but anyhow that that was uh pretty amazing uh john deere's new sand spray was pretty amazing uh, the 8RX with the tanks on it, uh, that was neat looking. I, I've never looked at one of them personally. Uh, it was good to see that and just look at it and, and, and look it over. But saw a lot of people that I do business with, guys. And, um, you know, that's that, that's why we come to these shows, uh, just to support them. Because I wouldn't want to sit in that booth all day and watch these people walk by. Y'all support these companies that you're doing business with. You need to build these relationships, guys, with these people. Uh, I talked to one gentleman today, and I told him, I said, you know, you need to you need to find you a salesman that's going to work with you, not not just sell you stuff. Uh, yeah, he, he needs to work with you through this whole process and to make you get the right hybrids and, and, and the right fertility and uh, the cheapest fertility plant you can and with the best bang for his buck. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, we bought some tools. Uh, 
bought some Milwaukee stuff. I bought a camera to go on the uh, loadout on the grain bins to where I can see in the truck. I can look at it through my iPhone or iPad and uh, tell when to pull up or back up. So we bought a camera, we bought a fiberglass stick for the brush to wash with. No more climbing up on a ladder, guys, no more. But of course we bought some we bought a few toys to add to our toy collection uh he had a few more that i would love to have but uh, i just i just can't afford stuff like that right now um what else did we buy oh got the stuff to fix the sign at the end of my driveway uh the sign had faded over the years it's probably been there four or five years now and the, and the stickers and and logo and everything has done faded off and the gentleman was kind enough to make me a new sign to replace that one, all the parts and pieces, and uh, got that taken care of. So now that don't look like death eating a cracker at the end of the driveway. But anyhow, uh, I'm fixing to get out of this parking lot and probably fight traffic. Yeah, it's backed up. That's kind of why I'm sitting here a minute. But we're gonna fight traffic here. We're gonna go and see if we can't find us something to eat. And uh, we gotta stay the night tonight. We gotta be here at eight o'clock in the morning and pick the trailer up and then we're gonna head back to tennessee guys uh, i hope that little transition right there goes smooth i hope i got the right ball he told me a two and five sixteenths that's what i got so i hope it's a two and five sixteenths but anyhow again i cannot thank y'all enough for the support y'all are the sole reason i do this channel i i don't have to tote this camera around all day every day but y'all enjoy it and I'm doing all of this 100% of it for you guys. It, it, it doesn't, doesn't do anything for me. I'm just doing it for you. I'm trying to teach y'all how to grow these crops, understand these crops, and, and, and manipulate these crops. Like I told the guys talking to today, I could see the look in his eye. He wanted to. And I told him plainly, I said, you can do this. You just have to set your mind to it. You can do it. But again, guys, Thank y'all, and uh, let's go get us a bite to eat. We'll see y'all in the next one.